Welcome back, you Washington football maniacs. It is your host, Brandon Scott. I'm rolling solo today. My my co-host, Greg Sykes, is actually working. So um, I got the time today to put this news out, and I wanted you guys to be the first to hear it. Um, so Saquon Barkley is not getting franchise tagged by the New York Giants and could potentially hit the free agent market. So should the Washington Commanders take a run at him? Why and why not? We're going to talk about that next on Washington Football Maniacs. So let's get into it. Um, so Saquon Barkley, again, it will not be franchise tag. So should he be in consideration by the Washington Commanders? Yes or no? So I'm going to look at why we, we should make a run at him and why we shouldn't and kind of come up with my decision at the end. Uh, so reasons why we should. Okay, fair enough. Um, so why should we make a run at Saquon Barkley? Well, he's a threat at the running game, man. He is a, he is a all-pro quality running back. You know, if we look at, Brian Robinson, he has yet to hit a thousand yards, and you know, he's a bruiser. He, I mean, he's got some speed, he's got a lot more speed than you think he does, you know. Uh, because there's a few couple touchdowns receiving touchdowns last year that he clearly had a little speed on him, man. But Brian Robinson has yet to hit a thousand yards. Now, there, obviously, there's factors to that, you know. The big reason why the run the passing game was failed just as much as the running game last year because inconsistent playing calling by Eric Benning and an abysmal old line. So, but Saquon Barkley, man, is an all-pro running back. Now, I get it. Injury issues have been a concern. But, I mean, you know, if you look at his stats from 2018, his rookie year, um, 2018, he started 16 games. 2019, 13. 2020, the COVID year, two games. Uh, injuries, uh, 2021, 13. 2022, 16 games started. And 2023, 14. So he has definitely hit his fair share of, of injuries and obviously his best best year other than 2022 where he ran for 1300 yards was his rookie year where he ran for 1300 yards and 11 touchdowns including 91 receptions we haven't seen any numbers close to his rookie campaign in 2018 and yeah injuries have a lot to do with that so you know coming into dc would he necessarily need to be the lead back no he could work in tandem with brian robinson with brian robinson being the bruiser and he being the speed back because, I mean, looking at Rodriguez, man, he's not really a speed guy. He's more of a smaller running back who's a bruiser, a power runner. So, you know, he could fit next to Brian Robinson in a speed and power backfield. Now, contract-wise, would I sign him to a long-term deal? No. I mean, just based off his injury concerns, I would not sign him to a long-term deal. And the only way I would sign him is if he's willing to take a prove-it deal, a one-year deal, where it's a team-friendly deal, where he can kind of prove that he can be healthy and contribute. That would be the only consistency to signing Saquon Barkley in D.C. to be beside Brian Robinson. Because, like I said, Brian Robinson, I do believe, can be a 1,000-yard back. But could we have a back a backfield with a power runner in Brian Robinson and a speed guy and Saquon Barkley? Yeah, it's very intriguing, to say the least. So I think that if it's a one-year prove-it deal that is a team-friendly deal, yeah, you take that. But obviously, look, um, there are other suitors. Houston Texans, you know, C.C. Stroud is, is rumored to try to recruit him. Um, to Houston, which man, all they need is a running back. To be honest, um, nothing against you know nothing against Pierce at in Houston, man. But you know if they add a top of the line running back, man, I'm telling you, the Houston Texans are going to look good going forward. So obviously he could be looking for a, a pay increase. But here's the thing: his injury history and his lack of production. I mean, like I said, um, he's hit a thousand yards three times. Um, he hit uh, 1,300 yards in 2018. 1,003 yards in 2019 and 1,300 yards in 2022. So injuries are an issue. He knows that. Other teams know that. I mean, maybe there's a team that they're willing to swing high and give him that big deal, but based on injury concern, I don't see it happen. So let's slide into why shouldn't you sign Saquon Barkley? Well, I've already kind of talked about it, right? Um, the price tag may be way too high, and we have so many other needs on this team. You know, mainly O-line. We've got, you know, where we don't draft, we need to sign as far as the online, you know, because really Sam Cosby to me is that lineman who looked really good last year. But other than that, you know, we definitely in center position, you know, we'll see what we have and um, the two guys we have center. But Cosby is the guy that is definitely the guy you build on as far as the old line. I think Leno's time is up at left tackle. You go out and get that left tackle. But the old line needs work, right? We need a lockdown corner. We need a middle linebacker. You know, tight end needs to take a look. You know, maybe another receiver if Curtis Samuel has come back. So running back right now is not a priority. You know, Brian Robinson with an improved old line could be a thousand yard back. And I think that, but I'll say this, 
with an approved old line if brian robinson still does not attain a thousand yards and next year you definitely look to upgrade at the running back position but you know brian robinson to prove that he could be that lead back so it was trying to give him the old line so you know why go out and overpay for an injury plague running back like saquon barkley you know what i mean and i don't think they will i think that you know obviously our cap room money could go towards other glaring needs you know especially middle linebacker corner and o-line are the three positions that we desperately need to reinforce for this team to take that next step um because all the other you know all the other positions in organization has been fulfilled it's you know new owner dan snot is about here you know new gm new coaching staff so you know now it's time to work on the player side of things the personnel side of things and like i said right now running back is not that emphasis man you know we definitely need to see what we have in brian robinson being the lead back this year and see what uh, rodriguez can do um right now antonio gibson he may be retained you know he could be that speed guy in the backfield but you know looking at why we shouldn't sign saquon barker injury concerns man and asking price you know i just, i don't believe with his track record and his injury issues now, when he's healthy, he's productive, but he's only been productive for three years as far as being a thousand yard back. And I just, I, you know, and with his asking price, I don't see it. Now, he could fit in other teams, but as far as what we got going on here, I don't see the I don't see the point of overpaying when you already got Brian Robson. So, um, so, I mean, those are the big reasons why we should and should not sign Saquon Barkley. So wh what would I do? What, wh where am I at? If I'm the GM, if I'm ownership, would I sign Saquon Barkley? Um, it's 50-50, and I'll tell you why. Um, if we don't retain Antonio Gibson, and if Saquon Barkley is willing to take a one-year prove-it deal that is team-friendly, where we have plenty of money to spend on other needs as far as middle linebacker, cornerback, and O-line, go for it. And if he gets hurt, you still got Brian Robinson to take lead back, and you have Rodriguez, man. So, I mean, I'm willing to take a chance on a one-year prove-it deal that is team-friendly too the team but if he's looking for big money no no because his injury concerns is a big reason why i'll probably stay away from him man like i said approve a deal i'm willing to listen but i'm pretty much saying that it's 75 percent chance that i'm not signing take on because yeah he's productive when he's healthy but that's the big question mark and availability is is the best ability and he has hurt all the dag on time you know he could definitely be a threat i mean he was nasty coming out of penn state but he's always hurt and you can you know, like and like i said man I say this all the time. This is what we say in the uh, United States Army. Availability is the best ability, man. You know, the fact that he's always hurt, I'm not going to overpay for a guy that's going to be on the bench watch my, uh, watching the team play. So, like I said, there's a slight chance that I would make that move if it is a prove it one-year prove-it deal that is team-friendly. But, you know, you know, the reports are saying he's looking for money. He's looking for a, a good amount of money as far as um, – and I just don't see it for him. You know, the, 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 there's always a team that's going to take that chance. You know, obviously his name carries a lot. You know, there's a team that's trying to get people in the stands. Maybe you sign him to bring people to the stands. But that injury history, to me, is a red flag. And I just – I don't know if I'm willing to take that chance. Because, again, we have so many other pressing areas in this team, man. And, you know, O-line, we've got to get, work on the O-line. You know, to give whatever quarterback, whether it's Sam Howell or if it's, we pick up a guy in the draft, you know, we've got to bolster this O-line. It starts in the trenches. And we've got to give this new quarterback – or the same quarterback as Sam Howe, the chance to succeed, to succeed. And so the running game right now, to me, is not a priority. You know, middle linebacker, corner, you know, old line are priorities. So, again, I would not make that move. I think the injury, the injury history and his price tag are too much for this team, and I'm just not willing to pay that amount of money because um, I'm going I'm to pull up uh, some reports real quick as far as what he's actually looking for. Because, like I said, there are reports that, you know, Houston is definitely looking – to pick him up so this is from heavy.com um let's see oh no that's not about salary uh is it, i'm trying to find it for you guys but it's not i can't see the article but he's definitely there's our reports that he's looking to get a payday man and again i don't see it with his injury history so definitely like like subscribe comment below let me know let us know man what you guys think would you take a chance to take on barkley or are you just out on it from the get-go so again appreciate you guys man if you're not a member of the washington football maniacs man definitely consider it, man because we have a lot of good content me and my guy greg sykes man we have a lot of fun on here man we you know we, are, we definitely try to keep you guys up on the up-to-date news within the organization any personnel moves any coaching moves we are definitely your first source best source for uh washington commanders 
information. But we got a lot of good, um, a lot of guests coming up, man. Um, my guy, my co-host over at Locked On Wizards, man, um, Ed Oliver, the real Ed Oliver, that is. Um, he is definitely going to be on the show very soon, and then we, and then a lot more. Is going to happen on this channel, man. So definitely, definitely appreciate all the support and love that we get from you guys. So again, like, subscribe, comment below. Would, would you guys be willing to take a chance on Saquon Barkley? So again, appreciate you guys, man. To the next video, you guys take care and hail to the commanders and peace. See you guys next time.